Surely you don't believe that the best explanation for an empty tomb is a resurrection. There must be tons of other far more reasonable explanations for that. Really? Well, I've got a cold case detective who says otherwise. Hi, my name is Terence and I'm your host for Reading and Readers, a podcast where I review Christian books for you. Today I review Alive, a cold case approach to the resurrection by J. Warner Wallace, 28 pages published in 2014 by David C. Cook. Available in Amazon Kindle for $1.99. It's also available in Faithlight for free for this month and this month only. Uh, J. Warner Wallace is a cold case detective. In his website, it says here, I quote, J. Warner's professional investigative work has received national recognition. His cases have been featured more than any other detective on NBC's Dateline, and his work has also appeared on Court TV and Fox News. End quote. Later, it says, I quote, J. Warner was awarded the Police and Fire Medal of Valor, Sustained Superiority Award for his continuing work on cold case homicides and the Cops West Award after solving a 1979 murder. Relying on over two decades of investigative experience, Jay Warner provides his readers and audiences with the tools they will need to investigate the claims of Christianity and make a convincing case for the truth of the Christian worldview. End quote. Now, Jay Warner was not a Christian who decided to study the Gospels and to write a defense of the faith. He was an atheist. He did not believe in this Christian stuff. So when he came to the evidence box that is the Gospels, this hard-nosed detective could have concluded that it was all. Everything was just simply a big hoax. The surprise, which is not a surprise to Christians, is the evidence does demand a verdict and that there is a strong case for Christ. Dr. Norm Gessler, Chancellor of Veritas Evangelical Seminary, had this to say of J. Warner Wallace. I quote, Few professions better prepare a person to follow the evidence than being a detective, and few detectives are better prepared Christians to be apologists than J. Warner Wallace. End quote. So that is his shtick. J. Warner Wallace wrote, Cold Case Christianity, a homicide detective investigates the claims of the Gospels. Uh, including this book, he has written altogether nine books, and today we review his shortest book, Alive, a cold case approach to the resurrection. The book is so short that in the time it takes for you to listen to this review, you could have read and finished it. But let's carry on with the review. Do you like watching CSI, or Sherlock Holmes, or Columbo, or Murder, She Wrote? How oh, do you remember that show? I love a good mystery. I finished multiple readings of Agatha Christie's a series of novels. Now, every one of those uh, mystery novels has a dead body. And here we have one too. To explain how he will investigate the resurrection, Wallace, the homicide cop with over 20 years of experience, gives us a quick primer on how to think through the evidence. So he starts with, uh, let's say you have a body, a dead body in front of you. So what are your options? What are your possible explanations? Well, it could be a natural death, or an accidental death, or a suicide, or a homicide. I can't think of any other possibilities. Then what you do is that you look at the facts. So you look at the body, and you see what, what you see will help you cross the options off your list. So... Uh, as you find out, and I don't want to give too much from the book, then as you find out uh, this is so-and-so, you may actually cross off it's not a natural death, it's not suicide, and so on. So that is what a homicide detective actually has to go through, and that is what uh, that sort of process, that sort of thinking is what uh, Wallace brings over here. The reason why this uh, cold case investigation has been so attractive to many people is because Wallace doesn't front load it with presuppos presuppositions. Wallace doesn't expect or um, he doesn't assume that you believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. Wallace just comes in and just asks, just the facts, ma'am. 
he doesn't want to know about uh, about inerrancy in that sense. He just wants to know uh, what actually is the facts, what are actually the facts. And this is the way Wallace puts it. I quote, Dr. Gary Habermas and Professor Mike Licona have taken the time to identify the minimal facts or evidences related to the resurrection. While there are many claims in the New Testament related to this important event, not all are accepted by skeptics and wary investigators. Habermas and Licona surveyed the most respected and well-established historical scholars and identified a number of facts that are accepted by the vast majority of researchers in the field. So then with that uh, list, uh, Wallace then picks four of them and he says that these four minimal facts or evidence is, I quote, the most substantiated by both friends and foes of Christianity. And they are, number one, Jesus died on the cross and was buried. Number two, Jesus' tomb was empty and no one ever produced his body. Number three, Jesus' disciples believed that they saw Jesus resurrected from the dead. Number four, Jesus' disciples were transformed following their alleged resurrection observations. And so those are the four minimal facts or four evidences. And now we have to consider what are the possible explanations. And, and uh, Wallace says that each of these uh, potential explanations have problems, and that includes the Christian explanation. He goes through seven of them, seven explanations, and I do think that it is a fairly comprehensive one, a comprehensive list, or at least the main ones are here. So there is a high chance that if you are talking to a non-believer about the resurrection of Christ, then one of these explanations will come up as an alternate, exp- as an alternate solution to the question of how, uh, what happened to Jesus at the cross. Now, this is where the book uh, shines, because the explanations which, uh, I mean, you talk to people, and they may sound reason- reasonable at first. I mean, uh, when they say that maybe it's because the disciples and so and so, you might have been stumped because you think, hey, that, that sounds like a good explanation. That sounds quite plausible. I mean, Anything is more plausible than a dead guy coming back to life, right? So here's the thing. The homicide detective then tells you that actually all of the alternative explanations uh, do have their problems. Okay, and I I could list them. Normally, I just list like a table of contents and just tell you what you can expect from the book. But I think I don't I don't want to spoil the book. Uh, I think it's kind of fun to read for yourself. What are the other possible explanations for the resurrection. So I won't spoil that part of the book here. Um, But I will give you one example, which um, I think is a common explanation. So when you look at the four facts of the resurrection, uh, the easiest explanation is just to say that the disciples were mistaken. They thought Jesus died, but he didn't. And that's why the tomb was empty. And that's why there was no body, because he didn't die. And that's why when the disciples believed that Jesus was resurrected, it's because they saw Jesus in front of them, because Jesus didn't die. And their belief that there was a resurrection, when in fact there wasn't, transformed the disciples and thus explain everything that they did later on, even willing to die because they truly believed that Jesus came back to life. Ta-da! That was such a simple explanation. There was no need for a convoluted resurrection event. My, my, how gullible Christians must be and how intelligent I must be because I thought of this. And 2,000 years after an army of skeptics and they couldn't turn this resurrection into an open and shut case. Yeah, you see, about that explanation, the defense would like to call to the witness uh, Detective J. Warner Wallace. And the defense would like to remind everyone who is J. Warner Wallace. He is a detective, a homicide detective. He knows dead bodies. And he tells you here that everybody would know whether they have in their hands a dead body or a live one. Wallace writes, I quote, 
It's been my experience that witnesses who first come upon the dead body of someone they care about quickly check for the most obvious sign of life. Is the person who was injured still breathing? This test is simple and effective. Everyone is capable of performing it, and even those who know nothing about human biology instinctively resort to it. It's also been my experience that three conditions become apparent in the bodies of dead people. Temperature loss, rigidity, and lividity. End quote. Now, he goes on in some detail in this book to explain uh, what those three conditions are, those temperature loss, rigidity, and lividity, and how those things cannot be faked and cannot be missed. That's not all. This detective is Toro. Do you remember in the Gospels how the, the guard, the Roman soldiers, stabbed Jesus with a spear and there was blood and water pouring out? Wallace explains that the coroner would expect to see water when a person is injured prior to death. So the fact that this little detail was recorded goes a long way to show that the gospel writers were recording what was actually observed. Now, there are other problems with the proposal that the disciples got it wrong. You see, Jesus was whipped, beaten, nailed. And then, according to the disciples, he was walking around like a normal guy three days later. Now, nobody is able to do that. And uh, also, another thing he noted was that the Roman soldiers had one job. You had one job to do, and it was not a difficult job. All you had to do was make sure that the guy you crucified died, or you are next. So it was an easy job with very clear incentives. So how on earth would these uh, experienced Roman soldiers fumbled in this simple and very important job. So now that off-the-cuff explanation of the resurrection now seems very lame. How on earth could disciples actually make such a big mistake and that everybody else would have also made a mistake? So what is the other possible explanation? So Wallace then goes through them. So he goes through one by one and he points out the problems for all of them. And that would be the essence of this book. Remember, the book is only 28 pages long. Reading this book will help you, whether you are a Christian or a non-Christian, go through the different explanations and push you to think uh, what actually happened. And uh, it's not so open and shut now because uh, all the problems, I mean, all the explanations does, does have their own problems. Let me remind you of the facts, ladies and gentlemen. The facts are, and these are facts that are attested by both friends and foes of Christianity, okay? Number one, Jesus died on the cross and was buried. Number two, Jesus' tomb was empty and no one ever produced his body. Number three, Jesus' disciples believed that they saw Jesus resurrected from the dead. Number four, Jesus' disciples were transformed following their alleged resurrection observations. So all these four facts are attested by friends and foes. The Christian explanation is Jesus was really resurrected. The problem for us to, to say that it was true would mean that we had to admit that this was a supernatural event. But having ex explored all the other explanations, considering all the other problems that is associated with the other explanations, then what actually would be the most satisfying explanation to us here? And so I could imagine, all right, so you, at the end of it, we are now... Uh, confronted with the Christian explanation. And I can imagine, I can imagine a reader feeling, a, a non-believer, a non-believing reader feeling very cornered here. The skeptic will feel that you have been led down a garden path and you feel trapped. And perhaps you want to take a step away from this corner and just pose your own question. Who profits? I mean, that's another great mystery, a uh, great question in mysteries, right, and in, in cop shows. I mean, who profits? And no, not about the resurrection. We're not talking about an event 2,000 years ago. We're talking about this book. Is the detective, is J. Warner Wallace truly an honest skeptic? <laughs> I mean, why should we accept his reasoning here? Why should we accept that everything that he said, the facts, the, the evidence, and so on? I mean, um, 
let's again imagine this detective is now at the witness stand and now the prosecution tries to throw some doubt on this witness. So he is not truly a credible witness. And the prosecution could ask, isn't it true that Wallace has profited from his cold case books? Yes, that's true. Isn't it true that Wallace has established himself as a credible apologist? And think about the reputation and fame that that comes with it. I mean, a global reputation. How about that? And since he is profiting, so why should we trust what Wallace has to say? In fact, maybe five years or ten years later, he might think it more profitable to come out as an ex-believer. He could disavow everything he said that was ever true, and thus he could play for the other team, the skeptic. So why should we follow this detective's lead? He might be the untrustworthy narrator in this story. He could be the Kaiser Soze of this mystery. And here is the thing. Let us not get distracted. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if J. Warner Wallace later proves to be just a guy out to make a quick buck. I say this to the most skeptical of readers because there's no reason for us to think that way and because... The reason why you say that is because it would be easier to, ex- to believe that than to believe the resurrection of Christ. The claim of the book is that there is evidence. And it doesn't matter what Wallace claims. You can. You yourself can check out the evidence. In fact, Wallace walks the same path that Lee Strobel walked before. Lee Strobel was a journalist. He went out to look for the evidence. He went into the evidence room as an atheist. And he came out as a believer. So you don't have to take anyone's word for this. That's the whole point. That's the beauty of the Christian faith. It's not dependent on anyone's dreams or visions. The cross of Christ is a historical event. The Christians claim, and and not just claim, the entire faith has Christians as witnesses. Just like a legal case or a court case, Christians are now saying that we are witnesses that the resurrection event is true. It happened in history. But it doesn't end there. The Christian is not content with you, the skeptic, admitting begrudgingly that, okay, okay, I accept Christ was resurrected, seems to be the most plausible explanation compared to all other explanations. The finale of this mystery or this puzzle is not that we know the final answer. That's not where we get all our, get our satisfaction, that we see how, how all the pieces come together. Because in this story, the dead body rose back to life. And because he rose again, as Jesus prophesied, therefore everything else he said is now true. I mean, he already did the impossible. On the third day, I will rise, he said. He didn't mean it in a spiritual way. He did not rise in some heavenly tabernacle that was not observable by the disciples. He did not rise to life in Peter's vision, or he did not rise to life according to an angelic proclamation to Mary. Jesus rose to life and he appeared to witnesses. And those witnesses went on until their deaths convinced that Jesus has risen. And so this book doesn't stop merely at saying that the resurrection is the most plausible explanation, among others. At the beginning of his conclusion, Wallace writes, I quote, It's one thing to believe that Jesus rose from the dead and is who he said he was, but it's another to believe in him as saviour. Every one of us at some point in our investigation of the claims of Christianity has to move from belief that to belief in. I can remember when this happened for me. As a rebellious, self-reliant detective, I initially denied my need for a saviour, even though I accepted what the Gospels told me about that saviour. In order to take a step from belief that to belief in, I needed to move from an examination of Jesus to an examination of me, end quote. He has more to say, but I really think you should read this for yourself. Again, I don't want to spoil the book. So um, the book is a fantastic book. Uh, I I recommend uh, anyone uh, to read it. It's uh, very short. It's very easy to read. 
Um, you don't have to come in with any presuppositions. You can come in as a die-hard skeptic um, and just consider what uh, Wallace is writing here. Uh, if you are a Christian, it's a nice refresher. You probably know some, if not all, of the alternate explanations, but it's nice to get reminded of them and to see how uh, this uh, cold case detective uh, puts it together. Okay, so that's quite nice. If you are a non-Christian or you know someone who doesn't believe, then and and you know they might think that there is a perfectly reasonable explanation for the resurrection, or they can't think of one, but maybe. Uh, Anything is better than a dead guy coming back to life. And in that sense, uh, this book would be great because it goes through the different explanations and then it provokes thought. Because really, after going through all those explanations, what else could be a better one? So I do recommend this for uh, the non-believer. Um, in fact, I would even say this, although this book is available for free in Faith Life, it might be hard to pass over digital copies and so on. I suggest that after you download this book because it's free, so you download it, you read it, and then you might might want to consider getting a stack of this book, which only costs a dollar and ninety nine cents. You might get a stack of this book and just give it away. Okay, I don't earn a cent. So even the hardened skeptic over here, I just want to tell you, even though you might not believe me, I don't actually make a profit with every book that you sell, uh, with every book that you buy. So I'm just saying that this book is just a very nicely packaged book. It's not too expensive. It makes a nice gift. And even if the person that you give it to doesn't read it there and then, you never know. He might put it on shelf and 50 years later, as he wants to consider the evidence for Christ, he may take it out and just read these 28 pages. The nice thing is, again, uh, this book is so short that people who would normally not read and finish a book might actually want to. And Wallace, I just want to assure you, writes well. He doesn't demean the skeptic's position. He came from that position, so he doesn't demean, nor does he aggressively push the, the Christian agenda sort of thing. All right? He has a very, um, these are the facts, ma'am, sort of tone. And the facts say that Jesus has reason. This is a review of Alive, a cold case approach to the resurrection by J. Warner Wallace. It's $1.99 in Amazon Kindle and it's free from Faith Life for February and only February. Why do listeners subscribe to Reading and Readers? Because it reviews a free book every month? Or is it because the reviews are very insightful? Or maybe it's because it covers a range of books from children's fantasy novels to tough theological books. Why don't you investigate? Why? By checking out the evidence. Subscribe to Reading and Readers in Apple Podcasts, Spotify or your favourite podcast service and never miss a book review.